the Aegis X kit from Geek Vape. Geek Vape sent me the full Aegis X kit, so this includes the Aegis X device and the popular Cerberus tank. But I've already reviewed the Cerberus tank, so I'm not going to spend much time talking about it. This review is going to focus on the Aegis X device, so let's get right to it. In the box you'll get the Aegis X mod, spare parts, the Cerberus tank, two Super Mesh X1 coil heads, a spare glass tube, and a micro USB charging cable. So if you're familiar with the Aegis line of devices, the Aegis X will look really familiar to you. It's about the same size as the Aegis Legend. It has similar curves, and it has the great looking and ergonomic grip that other Aegis models have too. The biggest difference in the Aegis X design is that it now has a huge 2.4 inch color screen covering one entire side of the device. The buttons are really strong and sturdy. They have a nice click and they aren't squishy. The charging port is on the top of the device. Now having a charging port right next to the atomizer doesn't seem to be a great place for the port, but the plug makes it waterproof, so you probably won't have to worry about having any issues with it. And as far as color options go, you have eight colors to pick from. All of them are black, but they have different accents and grips. You can pick from an all black version, a gunmetal and camo version, silver and brown jeans, gold and black, green and black, rainbow and black, red and black, and orange and black jeans. Now just to clarify, they don't actually call the jean colors jeans, but that's what it looks like to me. And Geek Vape did release an actual blue jeans color for the Aegis Legend, which looks like the same material, so I'm guessing that's actually what it is. Alright, let's go over the OLED screen. So the new screen on here is big and colorful. If you hate the little screens on most devices, or if you have bad vision, you're probably going to love this. The screen shows all of your typical things like battery power levels for both batteries, the mode you're in, the wattage or temperature it's set at, the resistance of your atomizer, the voltage, the amps that you're drawing from the batteries, and a puff counter. So lots of stuff there. Let's also talk about the durability, the shock, water, and dust resistance. The Aegis line is known for being extremely durable, and the Aegis X is no different. It has an IP67 waterproof and dustproof rating. That rating means that it can survive being submerged into at least 3.3 feet of water for up to 30 minutes. It also means that it has the best possible protection against solids, such as harmful dust or dirt. The Aegis X is also shock resistant. Earlier models of the Aegis devices were rated to have a military standard 810G shock resistance rating, which is really good. Geek Vape doesn't mention anything about that rating on their devices anymore, so I don't think they use it. I don't know if it's as shock resistant as other models, but the Aegis X has at least some shock resistance, so that's a good thing. They also say that they use up to six high grade materials in each device to improve durability. It's true that they use that many materials, but I'm not really sure how that translates to better durability. Anyway, if you work in a field where your vape could be dropped or exposed to the elements, the Aegis X would be a good device to consider. Alright, now let's go over the new AS 2.0 chipset. I haven't tried all of the Aegis devices, but I do have the Aegis Legend, which has the first iteration of the AS chipset. That chipset was awesome. It had a ton of features and it fired extremely fast. The original Aegis device fired at 0.015 seconds according to Geek Vape. I also have the Aegis Solo. That's one of Geek Vape's newer devices and it uses an upgraded AS100 chipset which seemed even faster and better than the previous chips. And now with the Aegis X, the chipset has been upgraded again to the new AS2.0. Geek Vape says that it's even faster, more accurate, more stable, and has even more precise temperature control. I have no way to test those claims, but I believe them. So let's go over some of those features and modes. To get into the modes, click the firing button three times. You can cycle between power mode, several temperature control modes, which includes presets for titanium, Ni200, and stainless steel wire. You also have a bypass mode, and finally custom curves. Once you've chosen a mode, you'll also be able to pick from secondary options, if the mode has them. For example, let's talk about power mode. So power mode is your typical wattage mode. You can go from 5 to 200 watts. Once you select this mode, you'll see that you can now cycle through options like powerful, soft, and standard. In temperature control, there are three preset TC modes, titanium, Ni200, and stainless steel. You also have a TCR mode that allows you to customize the coefficient if you have another type of temp control wire that you want to use. Bypass mode lets you use the device based on the build of the atomizer and charge of the batteries. Kind of works like a mech mod, but it's regulated. And power curves lets you set the power of each second of your vape. 
If you want 200 watts on the first second and 30 watts on the next, you can do that. You also have a few shortcut features. If you hold the firing button and either up or down, you can adjust the brightness of the screen. It can get really bright too, so it's a nice feature that works well. If you press and hold the up and down buttons, you can lock the device settings, but you can still fire it. If you press and hold all three buttons, the device goes into stealth mode, which means the entire screen turns off but you can still use it. And there's also an advanced menu. Now here's a feature that you'll need the manual to figure out in a couple of months. You're probably not gonna remember it. So to get into the advanced menu, the device needs to be on. You need to be in the settings menu, so three clicks, and then you need to hold the up and down buttons for a couple of seconds. So the first option is auto. This mode tries to figure out the best wattage or temperature based on the resistance of the atomizer. It's defaulted to on, but you can turn it off. Theme lets you change the designs on the screen. You have three themes to pick from, which is better than none. The color option lets you pick from five screen colors. You have blue, yellow, orange, red, and green. Version tells you which version of firmware you're on. And here you have ABB. I believe this stands for Auto or Active Battery Balancing. Geekfate posted a video on their Facebook page showing how this works. Basically, it keeps your batteries at equal levels by taking the battery that has the most charge and uses it to charge the other one until they're balanced. It seems like a handy feature to me. For example, if one of your batteries tends to die faster than the other, ABB will keep it balanced so that you can use the device for a little longer. You can turn this on or off. And then reset lets you reset everything to factory settings. And there are memory modes too. So if you want to set a few customized settings and save them to memory, you can do that for up to four settings and you can do it for any mode or setting on the device. And you have your safety features too. 10 second cutoff, short circuit protection, overcharging and discharging protection, overheat protection, over current protection, and anti-dry protection, which is for TC mode. All right, let's go over the battery. The battery door is on the bottom of the device and it opens up with a sliding switch. The door pops open with a spring and when it's open, you can really get a feel for the seals and durability of this thing. It's a heavy duty door. The Aegis X uses two 18650 batteries and the batteries can be charged within the device using a fast charging cable of two amps at five volts. The micro USB adapter also allows you to update the firmware if that's ever needed for some reason. Okay, and finally the Cerberus tank. Like I said earlier, I've already reviewed this tank, so there's no reason for me to do another full review of it. Geek Vape has been including this with our kits for more than a year now, so a lot of you probably already have it. I think that's also a testament to the quality of the tank though. But if you don't have it, it's basically a large 27 millimeter diameter tank with a 5.5 mil e-liquid capacity. It holds a ton of e-liquid. It has bottom airflow and it uses mesh coils, both things that produce really great flavor. It's top fill with a twist off top cap, so it's easy to fill, and the coils that Geek Vape make are excellent. The tank is also compatible with Smoke TF V8 coils. Smoke's coils aren't as good, but you can use them if you want or if you have them. It really is a great sub ohm tank that uses pre built coil heads, so I don't think you'll be disappointed with it. The Aegis X is pretty sweet. I loved the Aegis Legend and the Aegis Solo, and I love the Aegis X now too. It's pretty much the same thing, but with a big bright screen and more features. The biggest drawback for me is how complicated it is to get into the advanced menu. The normal settings menu is easy to remember and navigate, but nobody's gonna remember how to get into that advanced menu in a couple of months, but it's not that big of a deal. There aren't any critical settings in there. And you get this whole kit for around $96, or at least that's suggested retail right now. All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.